We are now tuned into the Burnout Podcast. I am your host, Rebecca Shelby, aka I got my these bitches next. Hey. And you know what we're here to do, so let's talk about it. Today, my lovely guest co host is Miss Ariana. Hello, you guys. Yes. What's up? Um, so, we're both Aquarius. <laughs> And this episode is going to be a lot about spirituality and the zodiac and stuff like that because I'm really into it. It's Aquarius season. I'm Aquarius. She's Aquarius. So I figured this would be like the perfect time to talk about it. Right now, we're pulling up like our natal charts and shit. So, um, yeah. When did you like first start getting into the zodiac? Okay, so... I feel like it was somewhere after I had moved out when I was 18 that I kind of got into it because the person that I was living with was actually Nigerian and they were into spirituality. Mm. And so that was my first trickle into knowing it about getting into my sign. But then from there, it was more of like, I have, I'm a color crazed person. Once I saw spirituality had like connections to colors, I like dove in head I first. like that too. So yeah, fun experience. It's just been fun from there. So what's your color? Um, I'd like, I like to say that I'm a rainbow mm. with a little black bow. Okay. <laughs> because, um, since then, I've recently just got into the chakras, mm. so I've been drawing them repeatedly, color associating them. So my favorite chakras to focus on is like the throat chakra mm. and the root chakra, because, you know, I'm very opinionated. That's an Aquarius thing. Uh-huh. And, um, I love dancing. Mm. So everything is from the root. That's cool. Uh, I would probably say like one of my spirit colors are like, I would say like oranges, but also blues. Because I'm like, I have a really like, I have a really fiery energy. Like I have a really like like fierce kind of energy to me but i could also be like really like cold and standoffish sometimes i like to like you um you ever seen like those weather charts where it's like it's really cold here but the radius is warm like that's like me like that's like my visual for that your natal chart you got it you put it in um i remember most of it so we right. can so let's do this then all right so you we could start by saying, um, we could start with our risings and our, um, our, our risings, our moons, mm -hmm. and, sun. and then we could do, yeah, we could do suns, and then we could also do, um, Venus, since that's Oof. the love. <laughs> I hate my Venus sign. All right, so you want to go first, or I could go first, it's whatever. Okay, so in order, my sun sign obviously is Aquarius. Um, my rising is Virgo, mm -hmm. and my moon is Scorpio. Mm -hmm. So we got a little devil's triangle going on there. Mm -hmm. And what's your Venus? Capricorn. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. So you're a fucking liar. Never. Uh. All I do is get cheated on. I'm so tired of it. I'm crying. Oh, my God. So my sun sign is Aquarius, obviously. My ascendant is Scorpio. My moon is Cancer, which means I'm a bitch on the inside. Damn. <laughs> and then my Venus, the planet, the planet of love. I think it's a Capricorn too. Hold on, wait. This cannot. Yeah, my Yikes. shit is a Capricorn. <laughs> Damn, maybe I'm a liar too. No. I literally forgot that my shit was a Capricorn. Nah, when Capricorn season came, my mm -mm. my whole life is just falling apart. I'm weak. Yeah. Damn, yo, that makes sense. Literally, when Capricorn season was around, I was like, yo, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. I need to pay more attention to that because I'm so like, because hmm. you know your moon is your emotions. So sometimes I confuse like my emotions with like my actual love life. <sighs> and I'm just like, okay, so I'm an emotional kind of lover, but ooh, I'm kind of like deceitful if I have Capricorn in my shit. So our natal charts are pretty similar. Yeah, I feel like it's probably, you're probably not too far into February then. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my love life is, I've been single for four years. Mm -hmm. So. What's that like? Um, <laughs> You probably love it. I actually do. I get the repeated surprising questions of like, are you lonely? And I'm just like, 
after four years, do you think I'm going to be lonely? Because if I was, I don't think I would have been. I'm going on five, actually. Mm -hmm. So, But you're, like, mad young. So I'm, being I'm single for ten. four years I'm trying to push like, ten, not going to lie. Is amazing. So, like, okay, so being that you're single, like, what is your dating life like? Especially, like, your Aquarius, so. Oh, my God. My dating life is non-existent. Mm. Um, I'm not an emotional type. Yeah. I'm not very affectionate, and so it's more of like a sex thing for me, and my sex and emotions are never connected for me, and I try to make that as clear as possible to everyone so that nobody's feelings are feeling manipulated, but yeah, I don't even go, I don't even get asked on dates, and I don't go on dates. It's like, high five or <laughs> bye. <laughs> nah, um, what you go, me, I'm very nonchalant. So I try to go on dates, like, I try to do the whole dating thing, but I'm just, like, really, um, don't touch me, don't look at me for too long, yes. don't be fucking weird, and then I, like, I feel like because, like, for me, like, I feel like dudes always have a certain perception of me prior to actually getting to know me, right, so... Who they think you are before exactly. they know you. Exactly. Yeah, I tell that to people all the time. Like, people are, they like the idea of me. Like, the idea of me is cool. But that me, the actual person, is um, different and complex. All sorts of areas of gray. So, people expect that I'm one way. And then when I'm not, they're just, like, disgusted. Not disgusted, but just like, uh, who do you think you are? So, I am very picky and choosy with dates, too. Yeah, I mean... Hopefully, maybe as I get older, it won't be such a, but as far as that is going now, like, I recently just got blocked because it's just, I'm very open about who I am, like, I can't fake the funk. Mm -hmm. I do it for my jobs, I'm not going to do it you for my outside life. got blocked for? Um, so, I'm very chillaxed about allowing people to come over, because mm -hmm. it's just like, you're in my space, I wish you would try something. Mm -hmm. So, he came over, and I'm very honest about I'm not very open about everything, but I'm very honest about me being anxious because it's very easy for me to get anxious. And I don't even know what I did. It seemed like we were fine, and then he left, and I happened to be scrolling through my messenger, and I realized I was blocked on everything, like messenger and Facebook. Wait, but what happened? I don't even know. Like, literally, he was just, he was just chilling. I felt like it was fine. Other than the fact that I felt like maybe he just didn't really think I was so as antisocial, he didn't mm -hmm. think that I was, like, as antisocial as I right. was, like, explaining because I'm very open about it. And he was just in for the surprise of a lifetime. And I guess maybe that shook him a little bit too hard mm -hmm. and hit the block list. No hard feelings, though. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Well, what's your call it? Mm. I don't know. Guys are fucking weird. And they're way more emotional than females. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like, a lot of people don't fucking tell you. Like, dudes are far more... Bro, everything that they're like, oh, women want this. Women like this. Women like that. It's actually dudes nine times out of ten. Like, even this shit, like, with kids and stuff like that. Guys want to have babies far more than so even... women do. <laughs> no funny shit. Bro, because I, I've I had know. exes that have tried to trap me. Like, everyone knows that I'm like... Not anti-kids, because I do want to have kids eventually, like, someday. But I'm just, like, not right now. Like, I do not want to have a kid at all, period, right now. Like, I, I know more than, I, I felt that I, the first time I ever got on birth control was to counteract somebody who was trying, like, not even just So someone tried trying. to trap you? Like, <laughs> actively trying to try? Okay, so what was that experience like? Like, aren't okay. you, like, bro, how are you, like, you are okay. a fucking weirdo. At the time... The person I the person I messed around for about two years. Mm. I'm not gonna say no names because, ooh. But he's a Scorpio, which is, which is <sighs> I found funny that my I have a Scorpio moon and he was a Scorpio, but mm -hmm. he already had a kid, and was just determined to trap me. And at some point, I just wasn't, and I was just taking it off as Mother Nature saying, "I got your back. You and I are on the same page." This this too shall not pass. <laughs> but eventually, I ended up getting on birth control just to. Not that that really gave me comfort because his baby mother got pregnant on the same one. So it was a thing. And you're completely right about men wanting to have kids because he was determined to have a second child. Yeah. So it was just like. 
Yeah. Nah, for me, I had an ex that just was like, yo, like, first, first it started off because, like, I, I'm horrible at breaking up. Like, I'm bad at breaking up. <laughs> so, like, if we break up, I'm still coming to your house the next day. And I have to stop being like that. <laughs> like, yo, it's, it's bad with me. Like, but when I'm done, I'm done. Like, once my feelings is out of it, I, it's an like, you're literally thing. a ghost to me. It takes two seconds for us to just no Period. longer have emotions. Because it's anyone. a mental thing. And I feel like Aquariuses, we're more mentally, like, in control we don't feel our emotions we think yeah, our emotions exactly exactly so for me it's just once i actually put my mind to it like focus rebecca you don't give a fuck you don't give a fuck cool but before that process happens i'm just like yeah i do give a fuck like i'm just come over here even <laughs> right. though we're broken up so um like i was pretty much done but i didn't want to ha start having sex with other people so it was just like a thing but like one thing i'm big on is like do not fuck your exes like ladies stop back. fucking <laughs> your exes Please. do not go back i don't care how good the dick is how much i think i could be friends with benefits no like because the thing is like once you have sex with someone that you already have feelings for you're you're like no matter what you guys do you're not gonna be just fucking Cause you already have those emotional ties to each other. Ah, that's how I feel. That's how I, I feel. I feel like it depends on the person's emotional level because I've, I've, not to say I've had feelings for people, but I've definitely messed around with people that I may have had like a small crush on for like one whole day. Cause I I haven't had a crush in a very long time, but mm -hmm. I'd have a crush on them for one whole yeah, day. Yeah, I haven't had a crush in a long something, time and then Yo, life is so bland. Like, I you like bland. Wanna, like, I enjoy it. I think I enjoy being Aquarius. I'm a hopeless romantic. I think that's my Cancer moon. Cause me, like, I don't care for the romance, but I do like the, um, the interestingness of it. Like the, but you have to be an interesting person. And most dudes are fucking whack. I mean, like, I have yet to find a dude that's just like, yo, like, I like, I'm crushing on you. Like, I did feel like that about the dude I talk to now, but like, he's been <laughs> pissing me off. Feelings, feelings fade. I haven't felt that way towards anyone in a very long time, to be honest with you. And I feel like the deeper I've like looked into my natal chart, now that I've actually pulled it up, mm -hmm. um, the deeper I've looked into my natal chart, I feel like. A lot that repetitively, repetitively shows up is that like I'm very like intuitive, mm. and sometimes like I just don't. My spirit just don't agree with people before I even speak a word to them. Right. And so it's kind of hard when I just feel like finding that balance between okay, you've been through a lot and you just don't want to deal with people, mm -hmm. and intuition saying, listen, bitch, <laughs> I'm saying something to you and you better listen. So do you want to start dating? Do you not want to start dating? Um, Are you like in between? If it happens, I have to feel some type of emotion towards the person and mm -hmm. pulling, that's not even pigs flying, that's not even hell freezing over, that's like the devil himself popping up from underneath the ground. Because mm -hmm. it's just hard for me to like people. What do you do? Like, where do you go? Because like me, I've been watching a lot of, I'm like, hmm, I've been watching a lot of hypergamy stuff on YouTube. Not that, um, I'm not for or against hypergamy. I'm pretty, like, neutral about it. So I've been watching a lot of hypergamy channels and stuff like that. And a lot of dating advice channels for black women. Because that's a whole different, yes. like, our dating game is a whole different game from other women's dating shit. So, like, I've been watching a lot of that. And, like... Not for nothing, like, don't get too wrapped up into it because there's so much more to life than dating. Like, there's so much more things Not to do. Up in yeah, it. but, I like, so it is it is good for, I would say, creativity. Like, to be out mingling mm -hmm. and dating and stuff. I feel like, as an artist, as a, as a drawer, as a painter, mm -hmm. as a writer, I feel like the emotions that I feel for people become a little bit too... They, Life imitates art and art imitates life. Exactly. And the things that I feel for people when I feel for them become a little bit too art-like and my art becomes a little bit too lifelike. Mm. Where I, if 
I actually had published two works of writing in high school. And if you were to go back to my, any of my writing in high school, it was so heartbreaking and so, like, angsty. But that's what makes it so So good. I'm just... I'm like that. I see why those fucking LA freaks that are in LA like, do like LSD and then bar hop like, and go write a whole fucking movie. Because I couldn't fucking just lit. once you're in my I don't I try not to like smash certain emotions like love and art together because in art you never die and there are just there are t- some pieces of writing that I love but the person woven into them mm. is just still there and there's see, just see I can disconnect my stuff yeah. myself from the stuff I create because most of the things I create are based in experiences and people in my life like even certain characters I create in my writing or certain themes I talk about on my podcast or even certain characters I play they're connected like I channel and connect to different persons that have been in my life and I don't despise that it's kind of like a, a thank you, like... Um, Cancer moon. I feel like, you know, you get the luxury of not being too disconnected from your yeah. emotions where you can plug in when you can versus yeah. like that Virgo Scorpio with that Aquarius. It's like mm. none of them are very emotional signs if you want to be all, honest. At all. So, yeah. Uh, for me, like even um, my one of the only exes I had that I'm actually still cool with, um, I was just thinking, like, he's also Aquarius, which is fucking Yikes. crazy. <laughs> yeah, but um, I was just thinking, like, yo, the next, like, love story piece I write, I have a muse. Because we're still cool. And, like, being that we're still cool, like, you know, um, not that I think about us still getting back together, because he's bad for me. But, like, I still can, like pull certain like right. emotions and stuff to put in that and i'm just I like get to use you yeah but um yeah, yeah. life in dating is fucking weird especially at this age dating doesn't even exist for me i feel like on my behalf of just i feel like i'm just an odd an odd person like an odd Beyond just me being an Aquarius, just me just feeling like I'm just an odd spirit. Right. And it's either like you mesh with me or you don't. And I feel like a lot of males in our general general age group just don't, they just want a certain type. And That's it's, how you it's, date older dudes. Yeah, I actually only mess around with people older than me. Like most of the people that I've hung around are like 23 plus. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, I feel like there's nothing wrong. Like, shout out to all the Barbie dolls that walk around here, hair done, nails done dress a certain way but that's just not who I am Mm -hmm. like as you can see I'm just not the extremely dress up type males want a certain type and I feel like sometimes they want pretty and docile and you're not getting either from me yeah like I just I can't be yeah I literally just like oh my god because it's like literally like dudes like I said like have a perception of me they're just like oh like yo like okay this is what you're about but the actual version of me, they can't they can't accept that. Like that's not what they want or what they need. Like for example, like dude to be like, yo, I really like you because you're so smart, you're ambitious, you're this, like you work hard. But then when it actually comes down to dating me, yeah, I'm ambitious, so I don't have time to really text scary. you back all the time. Yeah, I do work hard, so sometimes I have to zone in and tune you out because I have to focus in on something. And a lot of times, um, that's problematic because dudes want attention. Attention, and yeah. I, I have a thing of telling people, I am not your mother. Yeah, not even being a mother, but like I'm just not that girl. Like I'm not clingy. I'm not super like affectionate and stuff like that. So a lot of times I feel like guys are just like they want that from me, and they're like, you're not showing me I love you, and my um that you love me, and my way of I love you is like you ate today, you good, right. you got seatbelt the, on, the little you need anything from me? All right, cool. The me the fuck alone like feel me and like not in a way like leave me the fuck alone but like i'm just like i am not going to be on you 24 7 right. people's love language is very different and i exactly. feel like the deeper you get into just beyond spirituality we ain't grow up in each other's households we don't know what people saw as love we don't mm-hmm. know what they experienced as love what perceptions they have mm-hmm. because my perception of love may not be the same as yours may not be the same as anybody else's because right. we didn't grow up in the same house the love you saw in your parents may not be the love i saw in mm-hmm. mine or the love somebody else saw in theirs so that's why i try not to be so 
I, I'm neutral. I personally don't like males, but I'm, I've learned to be neutral about it because both sides are very tra traumatized. Both sides have gone through things, and it becomes a matter of whether you're going to be able to deal with someone whose trauma is either going to be the same as yours or on the opposite side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people just can't do that. I don't really blame them because you're not really obligated to put up with anybody's traumas. Yeah. Yeah. I Honestly, I just personally feel like um, that's why both people in the relationship have to be equally yoked and equally yoked in a sense of knowledge where they stand how they feel about things in the world you guys don't have to be exactly alike but i feel like everyone should just have something like yo this is what i expect and i expect the same thing to make things much easier because then if you're like then anything past that you're trying to change the person and most people, especially in this generation, aren't willing to change. Um, I'm not going to fault them. I'm like Eartha Kitt when it comes to compromise. Yeah, I'll laugh yeah. about that. <laughs> I, I can't compromise. Compromise for what? Like, Yo, I just was telling my ex this. Like, I literally was telling him because I talked to him for relationship advice. <laughs> Yo, relationship no. With your exes. Let me oh tell gosh. you. Let me tell you something. Relation, like exes actually give probably the best relationship advice because they were in a relationship with you like feel oh, me no. like you don't have to take all of the advice but if you have a good ex this ex like we didn't break up for nothing crazy like because you cheated on me or anything See, yeah, that so that was my last relationship so that's where that advice like thing we is we though. broke up but on like a mutual understanding like yo this isn't gonna work we're friends like we were cool we could still be friends so um he gives me pretty good relationship advice and i was just like telling him i'm like yo like honestly like i just don't see myself compromising in any relationship i get in just because i know what i want not only knowing what i want but like for my family for my kids for my this like i you know yeah, there's nothing wrong with never you should never have to lower your standards mm -hmm. to meet somebody else's However, for me personally, the reason why I feel like I'm okay with not being in a relationship because one, it's just not in my heart anymore to be able to do that, where I'm just completely like nonchalant, don't care for it, don't want to be bothered with it. But a lot of the things with relationships, I care a lot. Like I'll go to the end. It doesn't even have to be like romantic, platonic relationships. I'll go to the end of the world and break my back for you. And because I've just been in so many situations, especially with the one I told you I messed up for two years, I was going through nothing but drama back to back and faithfully staying, like paying for, st paying for stuff. <coughs> Not just for him, but paying for stuff. So it was just like me knowing that that's how far I'm willing to go for someone if yeah. I care. I just don't care no more because it's just that balance of protecting yourself but protecting yourself while allowing other people into your life, I just haven't found it yet because now it's just like protecting myself at all costs because I don't have time for people. Yeah, Fuckery. you come first. Like, I come first because at the end of the day, I took this first breath and I'm going to take this last breath. And it's either you're going to help it get easier period. and if you're making it period. harder, you got to go. Period, 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 period. So what are like, okay, so kind of going back into like Zodiac and stuff like that. Um, how do you, cause me, I'm really trying to learn how to, um, use my Zodiac to navigate myself, like, through life. Not necessarily like, oh, you're a Scorpio, stay away from me, bad energy, but more so in the way of, like, um, for example, like, my shit right now on CoStar says, um, it takes real courage to let another human see you. So, more necessarily in how the little tidbits and like that helped me in like my real life like who am i not allowing to see me i'm assuming probably my audience so <laughs> that's why i'm doing something more intimate so how do you do that um or do you i feel like as far as um a funny a funny story somebody texted me and asked me what my sign was and he tried to give me a synopsis of my sign, and I had to kind of be like, skirt, <laughs> you can't give me a synopsis of my sign, and all you know is my sun sign. That's a general assumption. When the only way you're going to get a specific ideal of who I am is if you know all of my, yeah. you know, my sun, the my people rising, don't even know that. my moon, my planets, the houses, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that put I put a whole stop in his whole train of thought and clipped that whole 
him mm-hmm. get turned getting on to me real quick mm-hmm. but i feel like for me personally um i usually watch my horoscope in a couple different apps mm. you know different places because um there's western timing and then there's the other type of timing where your horoscope may not be the same because it's in a different timing on the other side of the world mm. so I, I watch some of those also but usually i keep up with like the moon phases where the sun is traveling into what planets are traveling into what planets like we recently just experienced the Aquarius new moon 24. Yes. So I try to keep up with that and try to keep my energy flowing around those it's type of also things. the year of Aquarius. It was last year, year the year of Aquarius. Um, I feel like I'm not even positively sure. I just know we um, entered the year of the rat mm. for Chinese. <laughs> because um, for Chinese, I actually read a book on the conversion of like the Chinese New Year's, the Chinese animals into... Um, I was born Zodiac? in the year of the dragon. I was um this I believe I'm the year of the rat and we've just entered the rat and that's success and energy and all that is beautiful with associating with the rat, although it doesn't <laughs> sound very attractive. Mm-hmm. Nah, I, I like that. I actually want a dragon tattoo because I was born in the year of the dragon. I'm just like, a basic one. Please yeah, I don't want to get a regular one. I actually want to get an actual like I'm in between getting like an actual like pretty origami kind of dragon mm-hmm. or getting um a puppet dragon cuz I like puppets. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to get like the regular like Drake the American teenage <laughs> dragon squiggly dragon going down my back. I want to get something that's more me. Mm-hmm. And I think I might I'm telling y'all, oh my goods had two ideas, so do not steal it. Um, but I want to do that because I'm into the art, so I might get, I might more so lean on getting a puppet one. And if I do, I'll get it like right here, and then right here be the um, the the um, the fucking Phantom with the opera mask, the sad mm, face, the, the smiley face. Good tattoo ideas. Yeah, makes <laughs> my four little tattoos seem like nothing, but um. I actually love my tattoos. A lot of the tattoos ideas, I this lot after the previous retrograde that had ended in what month was that? December, mm-hmm. like early December, and then coming into Capricorn season, we were experiencing like that whole like massive of energy coming into 2020 with you know the, the whole year. This year being, we have a 29th this year. So mm-hmm. shout out to all the February 29th people who are actually aging. Yes. This year. <laughs> Woo. Um, I feel like I've had like a really good bout of creativity. And that was my pre-horoscope that I had read for 2020, like a good like mass bout of creativity and expression. Like mm. I recently got this tattoo on my neck that says Virago. Did it hurt? Um, I like pain, so I'm not the question. I'm not the person. I that like asks it for too, that. cause um, people ask me about my thigh tattoo, and I'm like, no, not at all. But I want to get my neck, and I heard the neck actually does hurt. Wait, um, I really like pain. I have about four tattoos, five piercings. So, mm-hmm. for the as far as the neck goes, I'd say it was like a two. Mm. All right, and so it was I'm only uncomfortable it. because I have a little neck and he was like on my neck while he was tattooing it so we had to take breaks for me to breathe mm. my tattoo artist his name is Bully cause he don't stop see I need a tattoo like, artist like that he don't do breaks see, yeah, and I, I got like my thigh pieces like this big like I with detail so I sat there and let him do the shit on my thigh but it actually didn't hurt that bad so yeah so I've had a really like good bout of creativity with this 2020 energy outside of the fact that January has been a rough month mm-hmm. getting this tattoo was very self 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 entitling self liberating because Virago is a Latin word I used to take Latin many years ago in middle school and Virago is in its negative meaning it's like a very angry domineering violent bad-tempered woman Mm. but in in the more positive light it's a female warrior and i felt like Mm -hmm. very fitting to be short-tempered but i'll be short-tempered and lighting fuses as i'm going to war Mm -hmm. so i think that spirituality plays a big part in how i like how i express myself because then that expression becomes a little bit softer i feel like my expression has become a little bit less aggressive as i've gone on the spiritual path of like meditating knowing the colors looking into videos just my expression has become a little less less bark more like you can see it and not feel so like Mm -hmm. attacked by it yeah yeah i've been i've been working on that too i feel like as aquarian women we have a way of like attacking with our words when we feel like we're actually educating like we have a we have a way of belittling people when we speak 
And I've been trying to work on that because a lot of people don't want to listen when they feel like they're being mm-hmm. minimized. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I have like, I, I sound <coughs> angry all the time. Mm-hmm. That's my problem. I usually sound really aggressive. And even I've been trying to work on it because my friend, like my faithful one friend named Andy, he literally saw me on the train and he was scared to say something to me because I had such a mean look on my face. He just didn't want to bother me. Mm -hmm. So I've been working on that. And especially with like tone of voice of being nice because like I've only ever had customer service jobs. Mm -hmm. And so I had to learn to have a nice voice and Mm -hmm. a less like aggressive aura. I'm experimenting on the people at my job how to be nice <laughs> because like literally like it's getting to the point where like either if you come to my job you think I'm a straight up bitch or you love my service so I'm like you know what let me work on although I don't think it's anything wrong with being a bitch but do do. I'm like let me just try to work on my inner Listen, bitchiness our favorite a little Aquarian, bit Megan Thee Stallion just came out with the song Bitch. 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 Hey. Like, yo, what's crazy is me and Megan got the same fucking birthday. Like, yo, no funny shit. I'm just like, before I knew we had the same birthday, I would just always look at her like, there's just something about your energy that just. Yeah, I always knew she was in Aquarius. Like, it would have been something else. I would have been so disappointed. Yeah, I just was like, there's something about your energy that's just so like me. Aquarius and Pisces, I got to hand it to them. They always come out with a whole, they always have creative people. Mm-hmm. I give it to them with that. Aquarius and Pisces, I think have I feel like Aquarius always have innovators. Like we always have people that Oprah, Michael Jordan. Apparently Alicia Keys. I Alicia didn't even Keys know she is was Aquarius. Aquarius. Birdman. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. who else? Bobby Brown. Like even even like the most trifling of us are innovators. Rakes, Galileo, Rakes. Galileo, 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 he invented gravity. Well not invented gravity, but he told people what gravity yeah. is. Abraham Lincoln. The first black president. <laughs> Don't let that go be head. I'm not going to say no more. I'm done with conspiracy theories. <laughs> because no come. funny shit. Yo, Facebook shut my my Facebook shut me down. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say what I said about the day. Stop aggravating the government. <laughs> but all I'm going to say is I inquired a couple things about a recently dead celebrity having a diet and pill thing going on and he found out that the pharmaceuticals was putting illegal shit in there and now all of a sudden they're dead anyway after i kind of spilt the tea now i'm blocked on facebook for bullshit so i'm gonna chill with the conspiracy theories (laughs) and talk about things that i can still talk about that are also empowering y'all trying to get me one way but y'all can't get me the other Big anyway, that facts, but like, yo, no funny shit. Like, yo, I'm about Shut to start up. putting fucking black tape on all my devices. Like, I'm about to start being like super psycho that because, yo, I turn into Edwin Snowden, wherever he is. right Yo, now. I've been watching a lot of Dick Gregory. You know, what that is. Yes. Um, I try to keep my mind away from that because you and I are both Aquariuses and trust and believe we'll start connecting A to B and next thing you know we'll be at Z somewhere in Antarctica trying to figure out where the pyramids went wrong. Mm-hmm. So so I'm just like, you know what? Y'all will not get me. I see y'all. Y'all trying to put tags on me. You're trying to prospect me. But it's okay because I will rise. Anyway, but yeah, there's a lot of um, Aquarius is a very good sign. Like, like no funny shit, like not even to like, not even because it's my sign, but literally like no Zodiac can exist without us because we're water. Like we're, it's a little confusing though, because we're, cause we're also our, our, an air sign. <laughs> yeah. Our sign is water, but, um, we're an air sign. Mm-hmm. So that's why we're always very hard to read. It, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Why we're why our sign is water and why our name is Aquarius. Yep, mm-hmm. we're air signs, but because we're just special. No, but I'm saying this like yo, we're air sign, you need air to breathe. We're water, you need water to like yo, <laughs> like you need. we're everything you need. We are everything you need. What Matt, what's your sign? You're a Virgo. Oh. You mad that you're a, you're an old lady. That's what y'all are. <laughs> Listen, Virgos are old ladies. That's what all, they are. You mad that we all that you need? Aquarius is 
<laughs> yeah. mm. Wait, you want to know something? I will not. I will not argue that because some a lot of, of people, some of us, a lot of people think I'm very ditzy. Yeah, we, that's and I can off. understand. Yeah, we come off ditzy because I mean, we're we're smarter than most people. Listen, the thing that people don't understand <laughs> is that most geniuses are either crazy or actual fucking. And I I know retarded is an ableist term, but they're like literally retarded. Like Aber, not Abraham Lincoln, Albert Einstein literally could not speak until he was six years old. And somehow came up with the whole theory. Uh, yeah. Could, well, okay. Yeah. Well, but then again, look at our president. So true. No but see, like, he's an idiot that's like not a genius. Like he's just like he's an mm-hmm. idiot with position. But you know what? I'm, going into spirituality, I feel like after I got into it, I legit realized I was just meeting people along i realized about my natal chart in particular i don't some people's charts that i've looked into most people have fixed signs on their charts Mm -hmm. like their sign will be like all water signs all air signs or maybe air or water i have like all the elements Mm -hmm. all over my chart Mm -hmm. so realizing the previous year i was just meeting scorpios i was meeting virgos i was messing with an aquarius so i was just like woof Two Aquariuses together. Um, is good sex. That's th- it. Pretty much. <laughs> That's it. it. <laughs> That's really and it. good sex and good conversation. Um, because they were an artist too, so it was a level of comprehension. But it's just, it's so hard for me. And sometimes, majority yes, of the time, I just hard. don't. Because we're very cold beings, but we also like for our partners to show us some sort of emotion. So it's just like when we're getting the same coldness back, it's like, I'd be chilling. motherfucker. I chill. Like, I really was chilling. It's just for me, I just, I don't know if I can see myself with another human being. I'm not going to lie. Because it's just. So you think you're going to be single forever? Um, That's the goal. Not really? gonna lie to you. Like you I want to be single forever, but yeah, just because so you don't, don't believe wanna, in marriage, I, so you can I, have an eternal boyfriend, girlfriend. I wouldn't do that to someone. I'm not gonna push my. Views but there's on some people? people who like that though. Like I'm a firm believer. Like there's literally someone out there for everyone. So there are people out there who don't mind being in a, a eternal boyfriend girlfriend relationship. Like literally, I met a dude. He's a cab driver. I love speak, talking to cab drivers. But he's like forty something, no kids, and um, him and his girlfriend been together forever, and they don't plan on getting married. And he's comfortable with the fact that they have two little cute chihuahuas, and Aww. like, like literally, like there's someone out there for everyone. I mean, I feel like I've planned my life to be just me. Mm-hmm. It's not really inclusive of other people, which is something. That I've been trying to work on. I just, I'm not very people, I'm not very, um, believe it or not, as many customer service jobs that I have, I'm just not very people, not very people oriented. Like, people mm. being around me is just like, I have a bubble, <laughs> I like to maintain my bubble, and people kind of like, aggravates it. But I feel like, relationship wise, I don't see myself going anywhere because there's just things about myself that i'm learning to accept there are things about myself that i'm growing with and as selfish as it sounds i'm not putting up with someone with the same traumas different traumas Mm. because i'm not a therapist if i can go and get one so can you Mm. and moreover i don't have time to teach someone how to deal with me like of course there comes a day when it comes to friends but even that's kind of short-tempered for me but that being with someone comes with learning how they are learning how they tick why they do the things that they do and if you don't have the patience to comprehend that on a grander scheme of just this person is how they are versus they grew up in this environment therefore this is the result of this it becomes kind of impossible and i don't have time to kind of just sit there and explain to someone like hey i'm dealing with some mental things and some days i'm really okay and other days i just can't get out of bed i don't have time to kind of baby someone to understand me when i'm just understanding me mm. i can't take two steps forward mm. to take eight steps back for so you. do you think when you fully understand yourself you'll be more open to the idea of a relationship or not fully understand yourself but you have a grasp of who you are and who you aren't probably not because mm. once i get a hold of that once i establish the freedom like what freedom i'm fighting so hard to keep and maintain once i know like I can grasp what it is. I don't think I'm going to want to just share that with another person. I want years to like enjoy that. And that's why I plant my life the way that I did. So that 
when I take my last breath, it's just nothing but memories of everything that I did for myself. Because right. the first couple years of my life weren't my life. Like, leaving at 18 was probably the beginning of me figuring out who I am. Mm. And I would just like to spend these next couple of years just being me as me as I can possibly can to take my last breath. And if somebody wants to window into my web and get stuck, I just hope they understand what's normal to the spider is chaos to the fly. <laughs> and wish them the best of luck. I like that phrase. I like that phrase. But, nah, that's interesting. You know... I I pretty much because I have like I'm very conflicted with I'm very conflicted with like um like there's part of me that has the like yeah I want to like be married and have kids and stuff like that but there is a part of me that knows that if that happens it probably won't happen for a while because I'm like so into my career and then there's another part of me that's just like, eh, like this thing just might not happen. Like I might just never have. Yeah. But like for me, I feel like it's more real because it's like presented to me every day. Like it's just like in my face every day. But um, life is just crazy. And, and humans, humans, humans. Um, mm -hmm. Human nature is as human nature does. Yeah. And it just gets fucking weirder and fucking weirder and fucking weirder. I hate it here. Two stars. Actually, none. Yeah, I would not. Just know. If there's any aliens that listen to my podcast, first of all, I'm flattered. Second of all, take me um, with you. <laughs> I don't belong here. Listen, I would rate Earth at zero stars. Negative. Would two. not recommend. But on that note, um, thank you for coming and running a fucking mouth with me. Woo. That's what I, I like to do. I like to talk. This is very, I like this podcast. I feel like some. this is an episode people going to be able to roll up and smoke a blunt. Because I can't. <laughs> and, and get to their, their third eye there. That higher power of thinking. And get in touch with Aquarius that they know. Listen, y'all, be not as bad as we seem. Exactly. Just... Yo, Aquariuses are the best fucking friends. So for this Aquarius season, snag you, Aquarius. Do you have anything you're promoting? Anything you want to uh, share? Any, any, anything? I'm an artist, you guys. So if you just follow Demon the Brat, mm -hmm. exactly how it sounds. Um, I'll be posting some of my work and I soon start doing canvases of things. Okay, cool, so cool, cool. look out for Copacetic Chaos popping up on your walls. Yes, I like that. And as always, I am your host, Rebecca Shelby, aka I got my foot on these bitches next. It is Period. Aquarius season. I am the Aquarius Queen. And this is the Burnout Podcast, as always, at S Street Media. Follow us at burnout.pod. Follow the word at S underscore street underscore media and it was your call um you didn't say about your event. oh yeah and damn okay so before we get the fuck out of here let me tell y'all ariana was actually at my event yes. so um women with voices. yes we had women with voices that show was fucking amazing people laughed cried i had a lot of compliments on my food so you guys better come out to the next one because your girl can cook because no funny shit that was my biggest fear like if people start eating my food and they like if somebody like yo this shit nasty <laughs> Like, like, I'd be heartbroken for bro, you. Bro, the whole event would have been done. If I had to heard someone be like, yo, I ain't fucking with this food. This shit is disgusting. I would have been hurt for you. I would have ate it regardless, like, though. Yo, get I the fuck out. I would have ate it with a smile, though. They just would have been, they just would just full Like, yo, no funny shit, but it was amazing. We had a lot of beautiful women come out and perform, talk about the experiences. Um, We got an A-plus for diversity. It was all sorts of women up in the spot, all sorts of brown women up in there. Yes. So um, did you enjoy it? Did you have I fun? I loved it. I, and I like alcohol, so yeah. of course, of course. But it was a very good experience to see like women from different walks of life being in a room, and it's no shade, it's no animosity no we're petty no cat scratching like it's it was a good energy and it can happen it should happen more mm -hmm. it just takes a lot of patience yeah yo no funny shit like shout out chichi lovato yeah definitely gotta 
listen to her music but she came up to me and was like this is the first time i've been around so many girls and no one has fought and i just like <laughs> like i mean she's it, not lying yes yes like it took me a minute to process that like, like she's right this is my first time being women around. are worse women will sit there as soon as they feel threatened in any shape or form because i've been known to do it on trains i feel threatened by another female i would be so quick to hop on my seat and like you want to do something yeah like this shit is i'm like wow she's right I gotta do this again. So um, it was just an amazing experience. All the videos and everything will be on SG Media's YouTube channel. Already, the video's already out. Oh, the video's, the video's already, already out. out. You guys, go and check yeah, it out. So Have make fun. sure you guys check that out. The panel was amazing. We had a lot of good questions coming from the stream at home. We had a lot of good questions to answer. What was some of your favorite like parts of the night? I feel like top favorite part was probably like seeing other female rappers mm -hmm. i'm a big supporter of female rappers and aren't like outside of like rico nasty or like asian doll or like the other like cash doll those other female rappers mm -hmm. it's nice to see that others exist yeah and that look like us beyond yeah. just beyond just being black being from the same hood coming out yeah. of a hood yeah definitely so um we did that was the quick little recap about women with voices i'm definitely going to be having another one in april so make sure you guys look out for that one it'll be a different topic probably some mental health mm -hmm. so um we will definitely keep you posted at that as always i am your host rebecca shelby i'm gonna do my closing again because i could do that okay i got my Foot on these bitches next. Mm -hmm. As always, we are here at Estry Media. This is the Burnout Podcast. Say thank you to my lovely host for joining us. Yo. And we are out.